Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Premier Boxing Promotions' first press conference of 2019 here at the Edmonton Eagles Amateur Boxing Club. We'd like to thank you for joining us in the build-up to our April 20th card at Pickett's Lock Sports Centre in the Lee Valley. Tickets are on sale now, and the event itself will be broadcast live on Hellenic Television. Before I hand over to Dr. Gostas Evangelou, I'd like to quickly mention our sponsors, who are the following. Performance, Personal Performance CBD, Pumping Iron Gym London, Hellenic Television, Edmonton Eagles Amateur Boxing Club, Indulgence Hair and Beauty, Rigford, The Ability Group, Hilton London Cyan Park, The Alchemist, Flash Fitness, Spray Tech, and the British Board of Boxing Control. I'd now like to hand over to Dr. Gostas Evangelou, MBE. Welcome, this has been a good build up to this 2019 uh, show in uh, Lee Valley. And we have a wonderful car, a lot of inspiring prospects who have been achieved on, on, the, on the domestic level and the highest level and also internationally. I'm looking forward to world honours. So before I move on to say anything else about the show, I just want to invite John to give, introduce who's here this evening, so for your benefit to know who will be on the card and how the show's going to unfold. So John. Okay, so I'm just going to run through um, the card. My name's John. I just, a couple of the people that are seated here today who are, have joined uh, this wonderful press conference. Um, sitting down there is a pro well-known professional boxing trainer, Mr. Gary Innes, ladies and gentlemen. And our, our man from Ghana, Mr. Suleimanu Layi, where are you? There's a little bit behind him, very much. And um, as well as uh, Christian Andreas and everybody at the top table, Julian, who's the most amazing man, does a fantastic job, unheralded, but he's much, much better than anybody I've seen. Um, and Mr. Mark Lyons, who's sitting over there, the promoter Mark Lyons, who's a wonderful friend of Costas's. So just a big round of applause for, for everybody who's turned out tonight. <laughs> right, so those are, the, uh, those are the people here, or some of the people here. So let's have a look at some of the fights that Costas has put together uh, after a fantastic debut show last time out. Um, so I'm going to uh, uh, bring in, um, he's my favorite man because he's a music man like me, um, Humza Awan, who, who, who really looked very, very impressive um, on his debut against a pretty tough opponent. So Humza, on your debut, I watched the fight, just tell me, what your game plan was on that fight and how you felt going through it and how you felt at the end after your arm was raised. Hello? Yeah, okay. Um, so the question is, on your debut, the opponent was tough, but, you know, you won the fight, obviously. How did you feel that your debut went and how did it feel at the end after victory? Um, I mean, going into the fight, I hadn't fought for about two years. So uh, there was a certain level of uncertainty whether I was going to be rusty. Um, we played well in the gym. Uh, we felt that came through on the night. Uh, I had a lot of positive comments following the fight. Uh, a lot of a lot of people said that I should have been more aggressive and I should have knocked the guy out. But I mean, at, at this level, I didn't feel like there was anything to prove by knocking out uh, someone at the bottom of the rankings in the So. Um, I didn't want to. I didn't want to to look awkward or tight or nervous during the fight, and I I felt like I looked relaxed and showed my ability. Um, Are you going for for this fight coming up? We don't know who the opponent is, obviously, but for this fight coming up, because I think relaxation is obviously very important. Any trainer will tell you, Julian, Gary, anybody else, Costas, the relaxation. Are you going to be bringing that to the table next time? Yeah, of course, because, um, you know, with, with stepping into the ring, professional ring for the first time, I, I, I liken it to stepping in, into the amateur ring for the first time. It's, it's in a lot of ways very similar to sparring in the, in the gym, but what, what makes it difficult are the little differences. You know what I mean? The, the softness of the canvas or the, the stairs walking up into the ring, those are the things that really impact you going into a fight for the first time. So my thinking going into the first professional bout was, what is going to be different? And 
and um, not much. Right. So now I'm with that uncertainty be, have been cleared now. I'm going into the next one. So lastly, your preparation for this fight, is it going to change from the first fight or is it more of the same thing or a bit of both? Um, well, we, we're always in the gym working. Um, we don't, we don't train in camps. <coughs> we're always in the gym you know, throughout the whole year. So my training has been very much the same, but I am by far a better fighter now than I was November last year. Right. Well, that's, so that's far, great. So I'm looking forward to the 24th people. And I just want to bring you in here. Um, Andreas, I mean, he's not your weight. I mean, Aaron's more your weight. But have you been impressed, truthfully, with, with Humza since he, had, before his first fight and leading up to this one that's coming up in April? Um, Hamza's been at the gym for, I can't remember how many, how many years ago? Eight. So eight or nine years, and he's in here more than anyone. Every single day I see him. Every day I come here, I coach a bit, I train a bit. But Hamza's always here. Um, like my brother and I, we... We didn't just want to stay in our little pocket in London. We travelled the world to get the best we can get. And Hamza's travelled to LA, trained in some of the toughest gyms out there. Wow. My brother and I did as well. And they're tough guys. When you're out of your comfort zone, they always want to beat up a British guy. They want, they're all lining up. Is that what you found? Yeah. Yeah, they started like, I mean, I'll take him. I'll take him. So he's got that pressure. And he went in deep waters. And that sparring that with me and my brother and probably Hamza had, was tougher than a lot of our pro fights that we've had. Anyway. Wow, really? So That's interesting. Good prep, and we done it when we were amateurs as well, and it was tougher than the amateur fights. So putting yourself out there to really dedicate yourself to the sport is exactly what Hamza's doing, and he's on the right track. And with, as in regards to his boxing, I haven't sparred him for a while, but every time we did spar, it was first off when he first came, it wasn't too difficult, and then harder and harder and harder until we're having good entertaining fights and maybe one day we'll do it in the ring. <laughs> I'm not calling you out, we're not having a fight. We'll never fight. Uh, it'll be entertaining if you think. Am I right? <laughs> but we'll never fight. But it'll be entertaining. Well, that's really interesting that he's following the same path going all... Because, I mean, the trainers, Gary, will be first... Everyone will first tell you that in this game, you, you've got to get... I mean, what did Nigel Ben do? Nigel Ben got on his bike, went to Sheffield, went to America, went everywhere, just got in his, got in his car and just went and sparred. And that's very important not to stay in your home, home zone all the time. So moving on to, to Aaron. Aaron, you made your debut. I've got to be honest, I came a little bit too late and I missed your fight, unfortunately. However, how did you feel... After after your debut at the Lee Valley last time, um, I was I was very re relaxed during the event. I wasn't phased by the crowd or anything like that. It's on, yeah. Yeah, it's on. Um, <coughs> my preparation wasn't the best. I injured my hand, so before the fight, was that in sparring? Yeah, sparring. sparring. So a couple of weeks leading up to there was was it three weeks? There was no real training. I couldn't use my left hand. Wow. But after. But I just got in the ring, done what I needed to do, and yeah, I'm happy doing that. So the cruiserweight division is quite interesting, and like every division is, it's a lot more competitive than it ever was. And we can go back in yesteryear, and the, there were very few cruiserweights. Now there's quite a lot more. So do you see yourself in the long term staying at cruiser, or is there a chance you might move up to heavyweight? I, th I think naturally I'm more a cruiser. The heavyweight's now like six foot seven. Yeah, that's true. So it's not, it's not for me. So you're going to stay at cruiser. Could you do light heavy or is it cruiser? Bang on cruiser. Yeah, I'll say I'm more cruiser. And sparring wise, uh, are you going to different gyms or are you staying at Edmonton or is it harder than, say, Humza, who's, who's light weight or even Chris? Yeah, I have to speak more All right, let's bring in Julian here. Um, <laughs> Aaron's passed the butt, that's no problem. So let's talk about his preparation last time and this time. Has it been easy to get sparring partners um, for Aaron? Because he's a big guy, you know, and he's a hard hitter. Yeah, there's guys out there that, um, that we can uh, approach for sparring. At the moment, we've been keeping a lot of the work in the gym and um, just a lot of improvements on certain areas of their boxing, developing <coughs> their boxing skills, their footwork, their defence, and, um, yeah, just you know, moving on to this next fight. Hopefully... Um, We'll get the W again for both of them. Well, that, that would be really excellent. So we thank you very much. Um, thanks, Aaron. So we're going to move on to um, a couple of the other guys on the card. Now, introduce a welterweight who's over there. 
I haven't seen you fight, Kian, but I've, I've seen you spar. In fact, we brought a sparring, you don't know this, but we brought a sparring partner down to the crunk a long time ago, and I'm afraid he got knocked out very quickly inside about 15 seconds. So I know about your power, right? So you've been out for a while. I, I don't know why. I have no idea why, but it's up to you if you want to explain it. But you must be looking forward to coming back. And the fact you're unbeaten and you've had a lot of fights, what do you, what's, your, what's going to happen now for Kian? What's going to happen? Yeah, so first is to have the fight and, you know, shake off all the rust and just get back to normal and just keep on doing what I'm doing, winning fights, you know, whether I knock them out, whether I don't knock them out, win every round is what I always aim to do, you know, and, and then just put on a good show for all the people that come to watch me fight. How long have you been out now? Uh, my last fight was October 2017, so a year and a half. It's a year and a half, yeah, so it's quite a way out, but... I think the ring rust obviously, you know, I have a couple of fights, the ring rust will definitely go. So I want to bring in, um, I want to bring in Chris because, of course, uh, Chris, you was a welter, weren't you? Yeah. And therefore, being a welterweight, please, obviously we got Hamza and now we got Keon. Just tell me the difference, if you're a welterweight, because I remember you used to spar with Ashley Theophane a lot and it was a certain kind of spar. Um, is it more... For Keon and for Hamza, is it more a technical thing at the lower weight or is there no difference at all in sparring? Because I'd be very interested, especially with Keon coming back and how do you feel that, um, that as a welterweight that his sparring and preparation should be as same as when you were? You know, when, uh, as a welterweight or previous welterweight, when it was heavy now, um, 10 kilos ago, but uh, I, I found that there were so many welterweights and light middleweights out there that you're getting a lot of sparring. And it was kind of, we were quite fortunate where on the top end of the scale, the heavyweights, there's not much sparring out there. There's very few people. You have to travel a long way to get these big guys to spar. Also, if you're a really lightweight as a, as a man, natural man, you're going to find it hard to find sparring. So as a welterweight, you're kind of sport for choice. Me and my brother, as, as my brother said that, we traveled a lot. We went to America and uh, we went to the Mayweather gym. And nearly every boxer in there was a welterweight, junior middleweight. And that's when, um, like, you know, we've actually theater fame as well, light world, top world. So exactly. Like, they've changed the name now to like super lightweights and stuff. Whatever, it's still the same, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I guess um, that weight is a lot more technical because the best, some of the best boxers in the world are world to weights. And when you're watching these guys fight, you're going to try and emulate what they're doing because they're at the top end. You know, you've got the uh, you know, Mayweather, for example, you're going to try and steal things from him and, and, and work on your own abilities with watching these guys and it is very very technical I think boxing should be all technical supported by superior <coughs> fitness of course but um, yeah definitely at world to weight Hamza I mean we've never sparred obviously because you know I was a bit older than you um, how old are you by the way? 27 27 yeah I'm older than you um, so <laughs> you know with, with Hamza um, he's a very very technical fighter very technical and growing up through the boxing years with Hamza, he has really, he's really be uh, become his own style now and that's like sort of at the beginning of your professional career you kind of try and be safe but I think in his next few fights he's really going to find his own style, especially with the technique he's got, he's a counter puncher but you know everyone can say oh, you've got to be more aggressive, the people that say that are probably never boxed a day in their life, you know you get in the ring. Alright, so, you know, Hamza done very well in his first fight. Very well, very, very well. And a lot of people were that don't even know Hamza, they weren't biased, they just said that guy with the, you know, the braided hair was really good. You know, just so you know that. So, the fact that uh, you and your brother and Ashley Theophan, of course, because he went to the Mayweather gym and he actually got a proper world title shot, he, did, he went about as far as he could. Um, for fight. yes, he is for Ham Hamza and for Kian, right? As welterweights and with the Mayweather tradition, and everything else. Are you? Do you think that they need to go to America, or you know, do they, should they follow in the path of you and Andreas and Ashley? It's, it's a good question. I think. I mean, obviously, you've got to have them, you know support to do that. You can't just hop on a plane and get to Vegas and and you know pay for everything and that. You've got to you've got to be uh, you've got to have a balance in your life and. and 
you know, we were fortunate enough to be supported. I gave my life to boxing at that, you know, those sort of ages, and and um, I fought my way into the Mayweather gym. It's not that easy. You can't just go, oh, can I spar and, and you know, get sparring there. You've got to work your way in, and I'm sure these guys are good enough to, to go there and do that. But it's up to you. There's, you know, Europe's a big place as well, and Europe's got some of the best boxers as well. It's not just about going to America. You know, go and get sparring in different places. Don't stay in your gym. Don't stay in your comfort zone. You keep beating up someone every day. You're never going to get better. You're going to get that person better. And that's the problem with boxing. It's not a problem. That's the thing with boxing. You're only going to get better by sort of getting beaten up a little bit. And, and um, I'm sure you agree that you need to find the sparring out there. All different varieties of sparring. I think like, we've, we've sparred as well, haven't we? <laughs> Um, you know, you've got to find guys who are, you know, that come forward, who counter punch, who are bigger, who are smaller, because you've got every single round of learning. So you do need to go out there into the world. Don't stay, you know, in Edmonton or wherever you were born and, and expect to be, you know, go on to fight the best in the world because you need to go out there and, you know, get a variety of sparring. Well, I, I've got to say that's the most brilliant answer, and I think that's clar No, it is. It is. It's clarified. That was a question on it. Has it clarified a, a lot of things? So, just a quick one for Carl. Carl, yeah, we've known each other many years, many years. Just tell me, how, as 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 a, as a resident of this borough, right, and Tottenham and everything else, all you've seen. How proud are you of what Costas and his team is finally achieving? promotionally for this part of London? Because we've had nothing before this, before Premier. We've had nothing, really, have we? I mean, the last one was, was that show that Vernon did many years ago at the Tottenham Green, and that wasn't great, yeah. right? Compared to the, his show, compared to that, was like Las Vegas compared to, uh, you know, uh, Devon or something. I was very, I was very <laughs> impressed with the... Um, because I thought for a first show, it was inside everything. Had a lot of drama, there was a guy, <coughs> there was a knockout, there was, there was pendulum fights. You know, it was really good. I remember it was a fight with the, um, it was a Yorkshire guy, it was Mike the Parish. Is his name Snowy? Yeah. Yeah, it was a good, good little scrap and that. You know, I, I see Hamza from the amateurs have all developed. And you know, it's slowly but surely, it's growing. It's, 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 it's not, I would say, it's been big, it's been slowly and surely growing. And, and now there's been going on for a while, you can kind of see where it's going and everything. Because I remember when we had club, I wasn't here, it was before, and he said that, we used to pack that up and everything. Yes, it's grown. It's, yeah, it's crazy, it's crazy, and it's, it's, a, it's a blessing to see it as well. Well, you know, that's absolutely fantastic and appreciate you saying that because I know how long you strive yourself, you know, you've been involved in the boxing and everything, you've helped the youth and everything else. So, you know, it's nice to see that the family here is is finally putting this part of London on the map. It's, where, it's definitely needed, especially in this time. A hundred percent. That's brilliant. Can I just pass the mic to Gary just for a second? I'm going to ask Gary Ennis a, a, a question. Obviously, I know you were nodding when Chris was talking about the sparring because that's what you always ever said. But what I want to know is I want to change the subject very quickly. When that show happened last time, I know you, when you go into shows, you have a nondescript look much of the time if the show's not very good. But when you were in that show last time at the venue, you was bouncing around like you were donkey in Las Vegas 25 years ago. It was, it was what? It was last night. Yes, so tell me why you like the venue and the whole show. What was it? Well, the thing about it, but you've been in boxing for a long time. Not only anticipation, you have that experience what a, a, a bill is supposed to look like, how it runs, the, the, the continuity of it. All these things, you have this expectation, and it was there. You couldn't believe where it was. It was there. I mean, the, this community didn't know what they really had because it looked amazing. It did, it did. It's, it's great that Costas is persisting. Yeah. You know, with, with the venue, I think that's just a, a wonderful thing. Um, uh, right, I'm, I'm going to... Yeah, yes. You want me to speak for you? <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Yassine Almachi, the former prize fighter winner, the most avoided... The, the most avoided... Avoided welterweight and junior middleweight in the history of European boxing, probably. Obviously, I was there when you come over from Holland via your home country and the struggles you had at the start. Um, you've been obviously the most avoided fighter. No one, I mean, you've beaten Junior Witter. Um, he beat the former WBC world champion Junior Witter in the pri prize fighter final. This man, hopefully, is not done. And hopefully, up with Costas, he's now going to achieve even greater things. Because you're, tell me, 
I know you're in fantastic physical shape. You always were. How do you feel? You come back to boxing now. Do you think you still got it? Oh, yeah. 100%. I still, I still got it. I was in the gym with the guys. Yeah, I stopped them as well. I saw it. He stopped you. You, you had enough. I saw, I saw the video. Yeah, exactly. yes, yes. Everyone's here. Everyone's yes, I saw it. Yeah. I was sparring with him. I couldn't finish the round. But fair enough. Exactly. He's got more experience than me. Well, there you go. <laughs> Believes it, you can find in his YouTube, my YouTube, Twitter accounts, and YouTube. You know? You see, Yasin's one of those characters. He blows and breezes into a room, and he has that ability to just to lift everybody up. That's his biggest asset as a community person. He just makes people feel happier just by his very presence. And hopefully, you know, you'll bring that spark. So, with you're going to be boxing. You, you're boxing on the show. No, you've got to get the light in. You're going to be on the next one. Yeah, next one yeah. Okay. So, at the moment, you're training regularly. So, just lastly, tell me, tell us, tell us, and obviously the TV. In a year's time, crystal ball, wh where you'd like to be uh, boxing-wise? Uh, probably, uh, I hope, at the end of this year, I will get a title shot. I get two warm-up fights, three warm-up fights. Uh, and if anyone here doesn't know my name or want to search on me, just type the most avoided boxer in the UK. Yes. <laughs> <Come> on, <most. laughs> yeah, this is how it is. And I hope, with the process, I will get a title shot or European title. That's it. Man here oh. is to me. Give us some help as well. We've come from the beginning. Exactly. <laughs> the first time I came to this country, I met him. I met, yeah. It was in that car. Yeah, in the car. Oh, my God. Uh... Who you saw me sparring with? A Josie. A Josie. And he said to me, Dan, you, you would be a world champion. He said that to me a long time ago. Well, I'm waiting. Yes. <laughs> so, that's fantastic. So, um, I think, is he, is he here? Is he here? No, but there's uh, also uh, Chavez. All oh, right, yes, sorry, it wasn't. Chavez. And is Chavez here? Yes, yeah. yeah, sorry, Chavez. I can't, my eyes aren't very good these days. I should be putting these on. So I, you were on the last show, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I watched your fight. It, you know, you look very, very, very good indeed. Had it, had it, it was a big stage because I think everybody, like I said, was surprised at how impressive the venue was. It was like, how did, did you feel it was a big stage? Yeah, definitely. I like the venue. Uh, it's a different atmosphere. Um, I said I want the box them again straight away. And going forward, I mean, obviously, you're very much a, a technician. That's, that's what I saw. Just bring in your coach here, uh, Xavier Miller. Is it... Bring, give us some idea of, of the technical side, because I, I personally was very impressed with Chavez's technique. Is that something you're working on all the time in the gym? Yeah, I mean, um, Chavez has been at my gym now for about eight months, um, but he's had a hundred, oh, about 115 amateur bouts. Right. So he's, um, he's got good fundamentals. Um, I was really impressed with his first fight with me. Um, he did everything right. He worked really hard in, in training. Um, had a lot of good sparring. I've got a very big camp at IQ, so uh, most of the sparring was in-house. Right, that's, that's great. Yeah, so he did really, really well, so I'm, I'm looking forward to his, his next fight. So it's, it's obviously, you know, it, it's... All these divisions these days are a lot different to 10 or 20 years ago, and, and they're different in one main regard. There's a lot more boxers, right? Yeah. Particularly at welterweight, like men or the rest of it. So, with Chavez, he looks so good. Is your, I mean, you don't have to answer this question, but is your, is your idea with Chavez to, to get him as many fights as possible and get him a, a shot to go right to the top of those charts, or are you going to take each step as it comes? I mean, yeah, with, with all my boxers, um, I would like them to have as many fights as possible and uh, get as much experience before they challenge for a title. Um, Chavez has got <coughs> basically everything. Um, he's technically very, very good. Um, you know, it's just in this day and age, you have to in some way stand out. But he's a pure boxer. Yeah. We don't have that many pure boxers. Um, so I'm hoping that he can rise to the top and be, and be recognised as one of those. Well, that, that, that's fantastic. So I was right when, you know, I, I've never seen him box before, but he's definitely a technician, 100%. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's brilliant. Um, I think that's all the... Um, the people here today, so I'm going to hand, I'm going to sign off, and I'm going to hand the mic back to Costas, uh, who's going to take the floor um, for the rest of the press conference. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much.
to ask any questions for anyone on the panel here, you're free, welcome to this in a few moments. But just to say for myself, from my own uh, perspective, I want to thank everyone for choosing Premier Box and Promotions to box and showcase themselves. And I've seen like Chavez box on our last show is amazing, spectacular. I know it's going to go far. Continue keep doing the work that you're doing with your help and your people, your top talent. And many of the boxers who are on our show, if not all, are top draw boxers with all opportunity to achieve the best in the sport that they can. And the role of Premier Box and Promotion is to give a platform for all people to move on and to put the shine the spotlight on them. It's not about me in promotion or management, it's about them showcasing themselves. And you're only as good or as bad as you are in your preparation for the bouts. You do the work in the gym, you do the, 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 the street work, you do the right sparring, and you just showcase yourself on the night. That you, the battle is won and lost in your training. That's what I believe and I've seen it for many years. And I also want to speak about El Macho, who is we're hopefully all been well working together. We're just going through the process of retaining the license. And as he's been the most avoid, but I, I, can, I can say that if we get through all the preliminary things to get your license, we're going to do our best to give you the best opportunities you have to achieve what you should have achieved before. So we're going to do our best. You know, that's, that's, what, we, that's what we're here for. So we thought, so let's to move on. If anyone has any questions for anyone on the panel, please put your hand up. And uh, yeah, feel free, fire away. Yeah, I knew you were going to If we have the microphone at the back there, yeah, yeah, Jay, yeah. Just make sure it's on. Just ask questions. Feel free, it's a family atmosphere here. Yeah? We all get to help and support each other. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, is this the only boxes? As, are they? We've got a card. If you can, if, if John can just read the list of the boxes of the night. Okay. And then you get an idea who's going to be on the show. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so um, uh, it's Humza. Aaron, Andre Soteras, is he here? He's not here, is he? Okay. Uh, Fuad the Pirate Hussein, Aaron the Sniper Sinclair, Louis Lights Out Lie, Peter the Gypsy Mirga, Matt Penwer, he's from South End, isn't he? Yeah, I know it. Yeah. Davis Pagan, good fighter, Matt. Davis Pagan, Georgie Bacon, Ollie Patterson, is he here? No, he yeah, yeah, he is, yeah, yeah. I know that. Chavez, uh, Kian, Tony Banch, Kian, sorry. Tony Banch, Mo Garib, Frank Arnold, and Kalia Karuni, the Pink Tyson. That's her moniker, isn't it? Yes. I kind of lost count. How many is that all together? It's one, isn't it? 17 contests. 17. It's a lot, yeah. isn't it? That's, that's, that's shows funny. have got to have that. It's economies of scale. You can't do an eight fight show anymore. You have to get lots of fights on there. That's how it works in, in boxing, basically. Can I just ask, because this is your second um, show, do you know when your next one is going to be? Any plans? Well, we have scheduled four for this year. Okay. July, uh, October and November. Yeah. Um, I might just add something, because um, I'm, I kind of box on still box but depending on what's going on with my thing but apparently i'm out of contract okay. and i might be interested in coming to your show your next one okay. but um what i found interesting was that i didn't know any i didn't know that he was here what's his name um yes and uh, i'll tell you a story about i think about three or four years ago i did a sparring with him at don charles's gym when he used to train chris and he was the only one that dropped me with a body shot <laughs> so he's really, really good. So, but he might be the one that made me want to come back. So when you do come back, maybe we have a rematch or something. <laughs> and a proper one. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> I'm a bit more experienced now. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank you. Do you want to say, who you, say your name to everyone? So we know who you oh, my name is Tunji. Um, Uncle T, five and oh, undefeated. So I'm, I try and keep that, keep it that way when I face him. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Though. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, but Tunji, you don't want to face Costa, so... <laughs> <laughs> Who's anyone, you, you any no, no, I'm fine. Any thanks. other questions, please feel free. Any you'd like to know about the show, about the boxer here, about how it's running and working? Well, you accept? Oh, yeah, yeah, accept, yeah. Well, on June, which date is going to be the oh, show? July, or, so, July. Where is it? Is it in York Hall or? In Lee Valley. Lee Valley, okay. Lee Valley. Thank you very much. Yeah, 6th of July. Uh, next.
Any other questions? <laughs> Any questions, Tony, of the boxers? Yeah, Jack. Premier Boxing Promotions. Well, the vision for Premier Boxing, as I said, to give a platform for boxers to showcase themselves, to develop as a platform to move on, achieve their goals, their dreams, their ambitions, but also for Premier Boxers to be a key player in the promotion world, not just in this country, but I believe internationally as well. And we welcome to have some very good relationships with all the promoters, Mo Prime, uh, Steve Goodwin, uh, Matchroom, uh, Frank Warren. I've, we've got it's, it's an end that I believe promotion should be an and and not either or. And we're all here to help and work with each other to bring the best out of these amazing sportsmen. Because boxing, for me, I've trained in boxing as a sparred with. He was very kind to me in that day, but yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, thank you, thank you for allowing me to do that. Yeah, what I'm saying, the, what I'm saying is a hard sport, and they train tirelessly, and they don't get the same kind of uh, rewards as you get, say, football and things like that. They work so hard to be in the, in the square circle. So that's the, that's, the, that's the vision behind Premier, to help these young people, all people, to achieve their dreams and aspirations. Thank you. Any, all the questions are directed to me. Any questions? Come on, Solomon. Come on, man. You've got, you've got a question. Yes. I know you are. Come on. Come on. Question so after that, yeah? You're not here, Mr. Solomon. Hello? All right. So I just wanted to ask, this is a general kind of question because I'm a boxing fan first and foremost. So I'm always trying to find new knowledge and stuff. So it's a question is for every single boxer here, right? Some t every, every fighter or people that train, they've always got like a, a special thing that's kind of unique to them. You know, like, um, like Marquez, for example, he might get weedy or something. <laughs> Some man might sleep on the floor, you know, like, like, like five weeks before the, before the thing. Some people do certain things, you know, like you might, or some people have a special drink, like that they might make or something. Like. So it's just like each, each arm box, I'd like to know if there's one thing that you do different to everybody else. It, you don't have to give away your, your top secrets or nothing, but just something that you find that you do different that nobody else doesn't do. That, that kind of benefits you with your training and helps prepare for your fight. So I'll start with uh, Kian. Kian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, me personally, what I like to do before a fight is I'll go down to Primark, I'll buy two fresh pairs of socks, and uh, that's what I like to box. I like to box in fresh pairs of socks, and I like to wear two, double them up. So it's nice and bouncy when I'm in the ring. I feel like I've got a bit more movement. Um, if, I find, if I've only got one pair of socks, if it was a bit flat, just mentally I feel like, ah, oh, I'm not going to move well. So that's what I like to do, that I feel like not a lot of people like to do. I wear two socks and they have to be brand new. That's interesting, no, I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> My one is just uh, basically meditate and pray, basically. Just keep my mind clear, you know, the task at hand, innit? That's really what it is. Okay. All right. But as I, as I say, I, I was obviously uh, there at the show when you was boxing, and I must say, you are definitely a, a boxer, yeah, and on top of that, I would say you are a stylist. You're very stylish with how you're boxing. Still paying the bills, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it, look, it looks good, too. Yeah, man. Respect. Hello. Um, yeah, so what I do, I've been doing it for, my, for maybe... Two years now as I sleep on the floor, I don't sleep in the bed uh, for two reasons. Uh, the first being I think it's just better for your body. I mean you sleep in a soft bed and you wake up in the morning and it's hard to get out of bed to go and run and cycle and do the things that you need to do. So I feel like when you sleep on the floor you're just a bit more fresh when you get up. You, you're like, you've been moving through the night as well. So like biomechanically, I mean, it's good for you. Yeah, I feel stretched in the morning when I wake up. and then. Uh, the second reason is that I'm sleeping on the floor, so mentally I'm, I've made myself the underdog of my own life. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, there's, a old, there's a saying in boxing that it's difficult to wake up for runs in the morning when, you're, when, you, when you've been sleeping in silk, in silk sheets. Yeah. Mm. So I sleep on the floor and it gives me that, that <sighs> extra, when I wake up in the morning, I know, okay, today I need to do something to strive, because I've started my day on the floor, you know what I mean, I'm at, I'm at the bottom now, so every day I wake up with the attitude of something needs to happen, I need to go and make it happen, you know what I mean, Makes so sense. yeah, that helps me. 
I just do yoga. That's it. Okay. Yeah, it helps me stretch, relax. That's it. Quickly, I just want to say that um, we share the same uh, <laughs> thing. Sorry, it's fine. I'm not doing it anymore. You can do it. <laughs> Oi, Chris, I've got a question for you and your brother. We all all back back in the days, boxes back to fight again, jump in the ring. When are we gonna see the both of you fight and you're dead, Sean? Yeah. I'm talking about the both of you, not one. Two. Um, I'm probably gonna get this every single press conference we get. I'm training for the marathon, which is in five weeks, and uh, it's 26 miles, so it's quite challenging. So once that's done, I'm hoping my fitness will be back. And then I told my dad yesterday, I said, look, possibly the July show, so maybe with you as well. Um, but like boxing is 110%. I've had a child this year, I'm married, so I haven't boxed with these dynamics in my life yet. So I'm gonna start, after the marathon's done, I'm gonna get back to my boxing and I'm gonna see where I end up because it's a, it's a her business. You don't just take it lightly. So if I get in there, it's when I'm full 100% again. If for any reason it doesn't work out training wise, I'm not gonna risk my head for anything. So we'll see. And then we can stop asking this question. <laughs> so basically, I'm hoping the marathon gives me that little springboard back into fitness, fitness into sparring, sparring into a fight. So that's my plan. What about uh, Chris? Um, yeah, I'm in a similar boat where when, you know, I, sh I should give out cards with these answers, frequently asked questions. But um, no, that's a good question. It's the first time I'm actually speaking out about this publicly. But, you know, I, I, I don't want to... I love boxing so much that I would never want to disrespect the sport. And I, when I trained, I trained and it was my life. I wouldn't think of anything else. I gave up everything to box. And, and you know, like you should because boxing's a poor man's sport and the poorest men in the world usually become the best fighters because they've got nothing and they want to fight for something. And I've been doing it for 14, 15 years. You know, I fought 56 times. And in the last few fights, I only had one hand which people, you know, people say it's an excuse, it wasn't because I chose to get in the ring and I didn't have that excuse. I didn't say, oh, I've got one hand. You know, I did, I kept breaking my right hand. And in, in the title fight that I, that I won, I broke my hand in the first round. I showed my heart, I showed my grit. Don Charles even took the mic at the end and said, everyone, by the way, he had a broken hand in the first round and he still won. Um, so I showed that, I proved that to myself. And then the fight after that, I could still feel the damage in my hand. And I thought, you know what, let me take some time out of the ring. And in that time, I've sort of built a life that I've really grown to, to love and I'm happy. You know, I'm, I'm an actor now. I, you know, I've got a personal training business, which I'm helping, you know, people, you know, reach their dreams of their own life and their fitness and things. And, and at the moment, I'm happy. And until that passion sort of comes back, then I'll see if I want to grace the ring again. But you've got some new blood here. You've got new fighters and old fighters are <laughs> still fighting. And um, you know what, I think one day I need to wake up and say, I want to get in a ring again. Because if you don't have that passion, don't fight. You know, I, I'm not a journeyman, I'm not gonna fight for money, I'm gonna fight because I love the sport and I don't want to discredit the sport by, by just fighting, or my, just because my dad's a promoter now, oh, well, you know, all the tension on me, it's not about me, it's about these new fighters and I'm just here to help. So that's, in a nutshell, <laughs> how that answered you. <laughs> Anyone? I just yeah. also want to just well, introduce Verity will be emceeing as well, being part of the team on on the 20th of April. If you just let's give a welcome. <laughs> okay. Any other what? Any other questions? Yes. Good evening. My question is to the boxers. Um, what do you think has been your biggest obstacle you've had to overcome? Um, what in boxing or just in life? In boxing, <clears throat> um, the hardest thing I think I've overcome in terms of boxing is the food. It's the food, man. It's like I love food, I love carbs. Know, Jamaican background, fried dumplings, all these kind of things. I don't get to have this no more. This is now I'm eating, I'm eating fish and, and, and spinach and you know water and a little bit of lemon in it and all this kind of thing. So now it's like, so yeah, so, so that's, to me, that's literally the I'm like, yeah, do you know what? After this fight, I'm 
that you know I've got to give myself something to you know look forward to. But that's the most difficult thing for me in terms of the whole training and training camp is just the eating. Yeah, just general eating too. You know, even like ice cream, I don't want ice cream, I just want some rice. Sometimes more. You know what I mean? Do you put weight on easily? Do I put weight on easily? Do you know what? I don't. Like to a certain level, I can put no I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> like, I put on a certain amount. I can put on weight easily, but it don't go over a certain amount if you know what I'm saying. So it will stay somewhere and I, I tend to keep in the gym before no, when I was actually back. Right. Nah, no, no, never 77. It will stop somewhere. But about 73? That's more like it. If I get a bit if I get a bit greedy then maybe 73, but you got to tell you can see me coming from a mile away. Walking every time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's the food that gets me, that makes me kinda, you know, wanna go, okay, let me let me But it's worth it, it's a sacrifice, isn't it? Uh, for me, it's just uh, structure, because I work, so it's just trying to, you know, put the time in the gym, you know, so right now, I've currently got a new job, so I'm looking to build uh, the structure so I can be in the gym all the time, you know, so I can perfect these skills, so that's what it really is, really, for me. Um, you know, with this sport, it, it, it takes a lot of sacrifice, um, not just from, I mean, Kian talks about diet, but, and, and Chavez spoke about time, but just like, socially, like, I mean, I went to university that I couldn't really experience fully because I was boxing at the time. And then my family, like me, my mom, no mother wants to see their son box. And uh, yeah, I mean, the rest of my family, they've had to, to live with my lifestyle over the last, Eight years, um, you get is this the one? you get um, you get one track minded with it. Like you get into you get into this cycle of sacrifice to try and prepare for fights, and then so me uh, for for the majority of my amateur career, I mean, I was doing it to the detriment of everything else in my life. Everything else was. Everything else could have set fire, and as long as boxing was okay, I was cool. You know what I mean? Even if I was on fire on the inside, <laughs> boxing, but as long as boxing was cool, I was cool. So for me, turning professional, um, and like I'm a bit older now, I guess, 25 years old, but uh, what? The <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, the, the obstacle that I overcame at the beginning of my professional career was conquering my own mentality, um, not being so one-track minded, so tunnel vision towards the fight and just having a bit more balance in my life. So it just makes you feel better. You wake up in the morning feeling good, like, okay, this day is achievable, you know what I mean? So yeah, for me, that was my big obstacle that I had to cross. I would say mine is dietary restrictions, as previously mentioned, it's hard to walk past take great shop and you see you see the food and you have to go past and not actually eat you can't eat it and actually as um, Hamza said you get invited places and you know you can't really eat there so you have to just turn it down that's it Salam <laughs> can you all please ask Costas about Premier Boxing and what the connection with Ghana is and what they're going to be doing with Ghanaian Boxers <laughs> oh. <laughs> I want to hear from Mark. Mark hasn't yes, said anything yes, yet. Exactly. Yes, well, I was actually no, going to bring... Mark. All right, all good. Mark, Mark, yeah. Mark was a very well-known promoter in MMA. How does the fitness, since you've been in the boxing scene, how does the fitness and technical skills of the professional boxers compare with the world of MMA that you've seen oh. from them? Well, they've moved on miles and miles. It's a whole different ball game. Back in the early days of MMA, any guy would just come off the street, jump in a cage and bash the crap out of each other. Uh, but as, as you've seen from people like Conor McGregor, they get, get to a, such a pinnacle of fitness. Um, the whole structure of the fight games, combat sports has changed dramatically. Uh, stamina is a, is a winner. Even if two guys are evenly matched, the guy that's got the stamina and has done the training will win. 
And that is very, very important is fitness. And uh, I know that Costas here and the gym here um, give great examples to their fighters. And all these boys are, are so dedicated nowadays. Um, it's just amazing. It's really incredible. Uh, good luck to them. I couldn't do it, that's for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is that the uh, end of the questions? We'll con con conclude now. I'm going to give over to Nick to have the final words in, in conclusion. So. Not much to say, just uh, thank you very much, everybody. A lot of um, good sportsmanship shown and competitiveness. And uh, we all look forward to seeing you all on the 20th, 20th of April. Pickett's Lock Sports Centre. Thank you.